I think in the next 40 minutes or so, I'm going to give just a brief overview for those um, who have not heard at all about MATLAB in the very beginning, and then I want to do a little demo um, describing the standard workflow that we that we model in, in MATRAD. Um, and then the most of the time I'm going to really talk about um, the specifics of the implementation and give you some details about that. Um, if we have time, I also want to show um, how MATRAD is used as a tool in our department um, already by, by a couple of um, students and postdocs. And then um, I want to also give another demo that describes a little bit more um, the flexibility um, of MATRAD um, before I yeah, start with a conclusion um, and an outlook. Uh, before we get started, I just want to acknowledge the contribution of quite a lot of people um, that have contributed to MATRAD over the last uh, one and a half or two years. So we have a lot of people here at DKFZ using um, MATRAD already and developing it actively. Um, there's a growing number of people that are interested at the HIT facility and we're also talking to some uh, external people uh, about uh, details of our implementation. I'm really thankful that um, everybody's supporting this uh, so much, and that's also maybe part of the reason why um, why why we could make um, th this progress up until now. Okay, so um, Matrat is a dose calculation and optimization toolkit that is um, implemented completely in MATLAB, and we published this under the GNU public license, and the code is available for download on GitHub um, right now. So you can scan this code and download the code and basically get started right away. We provide functionalities for photon dose calculations, proton dose calculations, and carbon ion dose calculations, and the latter also includes modeling of the RBE of carbon ions. For dose optimization, we then also um, support both kinds, basically optimization of the physical dose and also um, optimization of the RBE weighted dose or the um, effect based optimization according to the linear quadratic model. We do maintain a small graphical user interface for visualization that I'm going to show you um, in a little while. And um, I think also important is that we provide the data um, so you can directly get started with this tool. Um, we not only have this DICOM import, but as I said, we, we provide example patient data coming from the court data set, and we have all base data to model a photon LINAC, a proton machine, and a carbon ion machine that is required to um, yeah, run simulations out of the box after downloading the software. Um, what is kind of central to, to MATRAD is that we look at treatment planning as a sequential step of um, discrete, yeah, discrete steps. And that's reflected in also a sequence of MATLAB functions that are called one after the other. And we have access to that from, from two sides. One side is basically the scripting environment, the MATLAB environment itself, and also our graphical user interface. And all these two worlds are constantly um, synchronized so we can, we can work with the data at highest flexibility. And so this, this is something how our workflow could look like in a script. So I'm loading a data set, the TG119 Phantom in this case of the double APM um, in the, the mat, native mat format. Um, then I'm setting a couple of plan parameters so you can see maybe the gantry angles, the couch angles and so forth. I'm selecting a radiation mode, photons that is, and then um, yeah, I start by generating the steering information, which describes the geometric, geometrical setup of, of the irradiation. Then I do the calculation of the dose influence matrix in the next step. I do an optimization in this case for photons. Then I do a sequencing step. And then that's followed by a refinement of the apertures during direct aperture optimization. And then last, I'm going to look at the result of my apertures in, in this little example. Um, we can also trigger all these functions if we want from our graphical user interface, and that's just a screenshot. And now I would like to switch gears actually and show you how, how this works in, in real life. So if you want to like download Matrat, you just search for Matrat. Um, 
um, online, and then you get directed to our to our website where you can um, download the zip archive with the code, or you can look at the code directly on our GitHub archive. We also maintain a small wiki where we have um, technical information and also quick setup guides so that you can um, start learning yourself. Um, once you've downloaded that, the zip archive, of course, you get a zip archive. You can then extract things. You have it lying in a folder on your hard disk. Um, this is my download folder, so I already did this. It's, it's around, around about 65 megabytes. And then you can change your directory in, in MATLAB so that you actually have access to all the functions that we provide here. And starting the GUI is just a simple command. You start MATLAB GUI and then the graphical user interface pops up. Um, now we didn't, didn't have uh, any patient data loaded, so this, this screen is blank here on the side. On the top left, we can control the major workflow steps, and that usually starts by loading data, so we can load DICOM data if we want. If I click that, I get this little um, user interface where I can scan to a folder, which, uh, which I can then scan for the profiles that I want to import. Um, to, to limit the time a little bit, I'm going to um, skip that right now, but uh, directly load one of the prepared data sets, namely um, a prostate data set from, from the core data set, and that will take a little while before it pops up here um, in the window. I have really basic viewing possibilities, and the GUI is also not very responsive, so um, it's really just meant for, for a first look at the at your results. I can switch um, planes here if I want and other other basic stuff. Um, but uh, what's really nice about um, the framework is that if I look to my workspace now in MATLAB, I also have access to the data here that's displayed in the GUI. So I can double click on the CT and I see that this is actually a struct um, where I have direct access to the resolution and I have direct access to my um, cube of electron densities here, and if I want, I can use my command prompt to, I don't know, do a material override or something, so I have really access to the data um, in that case. Um, another entity is this CST struct, um, yeah, where I, where I basically store all segmentations. Um, you see here is the body, the bladder, and so forth, and also that's um, just a voxel list, a list of voxels that belong to, to that very structure. I think that might already be, be a little bit too detailed, um, but if we go back to the plan, then you, you see again sort of parts of the um, um, parameters that we specified or, or that we talked about during the script. Um, and you see, um, I'm currently looking at photons, but now I want to just design a treatment plan with you real quick for, for protons. So I'm going back, and I switch here in the drop-down menu to protons, and I'm doing laterally opposed fields at 9 TN 270 degrees, and um, 30 fractions. The pixel width here, that's nomenclature from the photon world, but for particles that corresponds to the spot distance. So I'm going to stick with five millimeters, so I have results rather quick in this um, in this demo. And I started the calculation of the influence matrix. So you see now here the weight bar. Um, yeah, the dose calculation has been started. If you look back to the shell, you get a little bit more output about what's happening at the moment. So we've calculated the radiological depths and and cutoff values for the first beam, and now we're moving to the second beam. Um, and this is now also going. Um, while this is finishing, I want to just draw your attention to that. Meanwhile, again, this PLN struct has been updated. So I, so I again have this duality of the information both in my workspace here and in the graphical user interface. So once the computation is done, I now have a new entity called DIJ for dose influence matrix. I think that's the Heidelberg word for dose influence matrix, DIJ. Um, and you see where we computed the dose for roughly 16,000 pencil beams now um, in MATLAB. And the dose influence matrix is actually stored in this physical dose container right, right here. 
And I could, if I if I wanted to um, start the the optimization now from the graphical user interface, but I also I just want to show you that you can also do this now in a scripted way um, from from the shell. You just run Matrat Fluence optimization with the correct input arguments. That is the dose influence matrix, the segmentation, and the plan structure, and then. You hit enter, and now you see the output of uh, the optimizer running, and also you see how the objective function is decreasing. It's already converged because I set the convergence limits a little bit lower so we can uh, have results a little bit quicker. So we already have our results now for our proton treatment plan. Um, and if I go now back to the graphical user interface, you can refresh your view and then you see that you actually have the computed dose now um, in the graphical user interface and you can start looking if you're happy with this result or start working with your analysis in a way that you want. Um, of course we also have dose volume histograms computation so if I hit show DVH this little window will, will pop up in a second that includes a standard um, dose volume histogram calculation and statistics um, for the different segmented volumes that you can specify before if you want. Okay, and now I mean the iterative loop will start of optimization so you can check if you're happy with your result. If not, you go to your objectives and your constraints um, in this table so you could start adding, I don't know, a constraint. You select the volume of interest, the PTV, it's a target volume with highest overlap priority. You can say, I don't know, I want to have a constraint on the minimum dose, and that should never be below 67 gray, and then you could rerun the optimization. Um, due to the limited time, I'm not going to do this right now. I want to go back and start talking about the details of the implementation. So um, let me just exit Matrat for now and go back and restart the presentation where we are. So that should be it. Um, yeah, so now let's go through a couple of, of more details. So first I want to talk about data import and export. Data import is of course supported for our native format that we chose for MATRAD itself. We have the DICOM interface with CT, RT structure set, RT dose import, and also um, an import of RT plan objects for intensity modulated particle therapy for scanning. So we can recompute um, treatment plans from the HIT facility with that. Internally, we also have interfaces to the med medical imaging toolkit based on, on NRD, VTK, and MHA formats, and, uh, and also an interface to SIR. Um, I put this in gray because this is not part of, of our external um, repository, but we do maintain this internally right now, and I'm pretty sure that this is going to be merged into the official release pretty soon. Um, for export, we basically support the same platforms, but no DICOM export at the moment. And also, um, the, the interface to SIR is limited to, to an export of, of a DOSE object. Um, but what I want to point out at this, at this moment is, uh, because these, these data structures are so descriptive in MATLAB, it's probably not a big deal to write an import function yourself. If you look at the CT, for example, you see it's a MATLAB struct that has these two, these four fields. The resol um, resolution is, for example, um, oh, this is interchanged. Um, so the CT resolution is, um, yeah, just three by three by three millimeters, and you, you can just also specify a structure like that. You can import any cube you want and put it in this double 3D cube format and then basically start working with this um, right away. So writing import functions is, is very easy in, in this framework. Um, for the dose calculation, um, the first thing is, or the, the underlying thing for all algorithms is a full volumetric ray tracing. Um, based on the algorithm of, of Sidden and others. Um, 
and that's used for, for both photon and particles. And we validated this algorithm already against um, the system that is um, integrated in Virtuos in our PDC++ algorithm. And here you see um, just a quick comparison for a prostate case between PDC++ and MATRAT. And I'm, I'm afraid this is barely visible, but this is 10 to the minus 4 in relative differences. So you see that um, it's really below one part per million. Um, the discrepancies between the two, these two algorithms. So, um, yeah, the, the ray tracing is uh, pretty much in line with what we do um, with uh, the, the virtual system. Um, for photons, um, we use a singular value decomposed pencil beam algorithm for, for beamlet calculation for IMRT, um, which factorizes the, the dose calculation in a depth dependent part Z and the lateral part that depends on the number of kernels K. So it's the usual approximation that you do for a pencil beam um, algorithm, but it's a little bit smarter um, in the description of the depth dependence of the lateral per number because you have these multiple components that you decompose um, your dose into. Um, the validation of this is ongoing at the moment, mainly because um, we're not modeling any dependence of these kernels um, with regard to the source-to-surface distance. Um, but, yeah, as I said, it's ongoing. We, we hope that we can bring this also in line with um, um, a validated system pretty soon. For Particle dose calculations, we use a conventional pencil beam algorithm that again factorizes in lateral components and a depth dependent, co depth dependent co component. And um, the lateral components have, can either be a single Gaussian to describe the lateral dose fall off or a double Gaussian. Both um, possibilities are available. But again, we make these, uh, this approximation that we have this factorization in a depth dependent and um, a lateral part of the dose. We've validated this dose calculation algorithm against Monte Carlo simulations um, of the hit beam line. So here you see results for pristine pencil beams on the left, an SOBP in the middle with a central profile, depth dose profile through the SOBP and the lateral profile um, through the SOBP. So we're actually pretty happy with this agreement against Monte Carlo and that's also um, reflected in pretty high passing rates for gamma index comparisons for, for patient cases. Um, so that's, that's the way how we work with um, the proton dose calculation actually in, in MATRAD at the moment. Um, However, um, what I want to point out now that these calculations have, of course, been performed with um, the clinical HIT-based data, um, but that one is not available for free download. What is available at GitHub is a generic set of an artificial proton and carbon ion machine. So the data that we used for this comparison is, is not available um, outside. If we move to carbon ions, um, then we also have to consider RBE calculations and these RBE calculations are again based on the linear quadratic model um, where we compute dose averaged alphas and dose averaged betas um, according to the Seida and Rossi approximation for synergistic effects of different radiations and with that we can then calculate the RBE weighted dose um, of, of a voxel I or um, yeah, the effect um, EI in, in a specific voxel. The validation of this RBE weighted dose calculation is currently ongoing and that's just uh, one slide where I want to show you a comparison of MATRAT against the single um, platform. On the left side you see the agreement of physical dose of single in blue against MATRAT in red and on the right side you see um, RBE times dose compared of the two, two different systems. Um, we have currently a master student that's look, who's looking into that in a little bit more detail also for different uh, radio sensitivity parameters and so forth. Um, but I'm yeah, very confident that we can um, also 
uh, say that this is this is validated in, in the near future. Again, also for carbonines, these computations are done with the clinical hit base data and they, they are not available for free download. If you want to yeah, get your own machine into MATRAD, uh, it's, it's again quite nice because we have this descriptive data format um, so here you see the machine data for our um, proton machine. You see one one column just describes the range of the particles, the energy. This is de oh, this is depth dose curves here, depth versus the the depth dose curve. We have the lateral sigmas in a, in a table, and also the initial focus size is stored here in in a structure because we model the beam broadening in air. Um, and yeah, you, basically you just have to and get your data in a similar format and then you can use this machine data directly for treatment planning um, in, in MATRAD. Um, we have evaluated the performance of the dose calculation engine again on the court data set on this TG119 phantom for a liver case and a prostate case and just real quick I want to show you the, the performance how long does it take for the dose calculation um, that's actually quite a lot of numbers, so you see photon treatment plans, proton treatment plans, and carbon ion treatment plans, and if you, again, go at about 17,000 pencil beams for carbon ions, you have roughly about a computation time of three minutes, two minutes for, for this proton case here with 70,000 pencil beams, or 6,300 um, beamlets for photons at uh, one and a half minutes. Yeah, we do maintain a couple of experimental features here at, at DKFZ. People are working with Monte Carlo codes both on the photon side and on the particle side and um, maybe the VMC++ interface will also go online in the next weeks, um, I think. But again, that's grayed out because it's not part of, of the GitHub release at the moment. Um, let's go to dose optimization. Um, all optimization relies on the IPOPT software package, which is um, released by, by COIN Operations Research Initi Initiative. Um, and it has a MATLAB interface, so you can download a MATLAB mesh file to use as an, as an optimizer. We um, model all optimization as a weighted sum of, of objectives, so our overall objective function F is composed as, as a sum of objectives Fi. Um, we do support constraints, nonlinear constraints actually, um, and also bound constraints, of course, on the optimization variable. And uh, yeah, with that, basically, optimizer we implemented so far different components to to uh, be part of the weighted sum of objectives standard uh, are quadratic dose deviation and over and under dosage we have UD objectives mean dose objectives and DVH objectives we also support constraints on the minimum and maximum dose the mean dose UD and dose volume histogram points so that's that's all in there at the moment and what's also nice is that it's all supported for both the physical dose and the RBE weighted dose or um, effect-based optimization. So it doesn't matter if you're looking at carbon ions or, or photons if you want to run this optimization. Um, talking about the biological optimization, I just want to mention briefly that we have to make this transition if we um, follow the work of Wilkins and Oelfke, then we kind of have to go from an objective function that depends on the dose to an objective function that depends on the effect, which introduces like this quadratic term in dose. And if we optimize the RBE weighted dose, well, we have the translation from the dose to RBE times dose. And that, again, introduces a couple of nonlinearities um, that have to be accounted for during during the derivatives and and uh, the objective function and gradient calculations. We also have multi-leaf collimator sequencing available for, for photons, but I do call this an experimental feature because it's, it's really just an implementation that follows the papers that are listed here. And what we see is that we end up with a lot of small segments, very rugged segments, and it's certainly not a treatment plan that you get out after multi-leaf collimator sequencing that, that you would want to deliver 
in any case. Um, direct aperture optimization is also, I think, still experimental because we haven't worked with it a lot in the, the MATRAD uh, framework and it, it suffers quite a bit from the starting solutions that are provided from the multi-leaf collimator sequencing algorithm. Um, internally here, again, we have um, robust optimization and probabilistic optimization available um, following the work of Jan Unkelbach and, and uh, Daniel Flugfelder. And again, um, I think it, it just takes some more time for us to, to debug, um, get rid of a couple of, of bugs maybe that, that might show up um, in the future. Um, before we are really confident enough to, to make this part of the main release. But uh, it's already been prepared, everything from the structure that you can have multiple dose influence matrices and so forth in the current release. So that's, again, not a big issue to, to incorporate that into the future. And internally, we already work with this. Um, yeah. Again, here are the, the optimization times um, for the same cases. And the message is, again, um, within a couple of minutes, you basically have your result um, after the fluence optimization. So if we look at the 17,000 benzene beams carbon ion case, you see this is uh, roughly four minutes, one and a half minutes for the, for the proton case, and the fluence optimization is um, about um, 88 seconds for, for this photon case that we looked at earlier. Here I can tell you that it's going to be just a linear increase if you have more those influence points in, in the matrix. Um, yeah, but for those calculations, I really, I don't, I don't know for sure. If you look at the memory throughput, by the way, what we see is that MATLAB is just a factor of four slower than the cutting edge implementations of Peter Ziegenhain, um, who's worked a lot on parallelization um, on, on, uh, on fluence optimization at the same hard hardware. So MATLAB is just a factor of four slower, basically, than um, a guy that did a PhD thesis doing that. So before I come to the next demo, I just also want to talk a little bit about our choice for, for MATLAB, because I think it's maybe not the most fortunate thing that you have an open source framework that depends on a proprietary software. Um, but we, we kind of said, we we're going to do it because it's so ubiquitous in the radiation therapy community, and we have benefits from yeah rapid prototyping, debugging, visualization that outweigh um, yeah this this um, the money that you have to pay to to use MATLAB. Um, because we are aware of of this problem, sort of we we paid attention that we don't need any additional MATLAB toolboxes in the MATLAB core, so. Dose calculation, optimization, all that is really native MATLAB code. Only the DICOM import requires the image processing toolbox. Um, but that's about it. And I think that's that's part of most of the standard distributions that you buy from, from MATLAB anyways. Um, also, all code that we have is really MATLAB native. It's not that we have the ray tracing running as a mesh file in C++ or something. Um, really, everything that we that we write is in MATLAB. The only external code that we have is uh, the optimizer IP opt. Um, still, if you're if you're not happy with MATLAB, you can you can basically use Octave, which is an open source clone of MATLAB. However, Octave from the community has very limited support for 64-bit architectures. Um, so, if you want to work with big um, big data sets, which you which you do if you um, want to want to work on a realistic problem, um, then you need to compile the linear algebra libraries from scratch. But that's possible. We, we've done it here. We, we're using it for some purposes. Um, but it's, it's some work that you have to spend. Um, what you get then is that basically MATLAB, uh, MATLAB runs also under Octave, but without graphical user interface. But everything else just works out of the box. And we have yeah, one one or, or two students that, that use Octave mainly, and we maintain MATRAD also in a way that it generalizes to Octave all the time, except for graphical user interface. We already use, use MATRAD not only for educational purposes, but like also for, for real uh, problems. Um, one thing that we do, we, we made a robustness analysis tool for the Heidelberg Ion Therapy Facility, 
where we just do repeated dose calculations assuming different range and setup errors. And then you can generate these uh, DVH bands and bands of, of dose profiles that, that you all know probably. And what's really nice is that while well, MATLAB does parallelization, supports parallelization if you have the parallel computing toolbox, and so it was really very easy for this bachelor student to gain a, um, an acceleration um, by a factor of 30 on a, on a machine that has 50 cores by just writing PAR4 in front of the main dose calculation um, loop. So that, that's something that you get quite easy so that you can, that you can set up these, these pipelines quite efficiently. Um, yeah, that's, that's just a screen, screenshot of the X Monte Carlo interface, um, where we, which is used to simulate photon beams in a magnetic field, and you here see the build-up effect of the photon beam before it enters um, the, the lung. And yeah, Oliver Schrenk uses MATRAD then for optimization and visualization and, and setup of the geometry and uses X Monte Carlo codes to uh, um, run the dose calculation. Okay. Um, now I, I want to show you a little bit more um, like a flexible workflow, how, how I called it. Let's say we now want to use MATRA to just compute a set of treatment plans um, but with different beam orientations now for our prostate, for our prostate patient. So I'm going to just write a real a, a script with you real quick. Um, so I'm going to do a new MAT, MATLAB file and I'm setting up again my, my plan information like this. I don't need gantry and couch angles right now because that's something that I want to vary later in, in my loop. I'm going to use just maybe just two gantry angles like this. And now I'm doing a little for loop. And now I have to generate a treatment plan that basically copies the information from, from the plan that I set up right here, but I have then I have to override the gantry angle from my array, my gantry angles. I'm specifying the couch angle to be zero, and I'm setting the number of beams to, well, I can also set it directly to one because it's always just one beam. And now I do again the steps um, to, to optimize the treatment plan in MATRAD. I generate the steering information that holds information about the geometrical plan setup. I calculate those influence matrices for, for this plan, so for the current plan. And then I do inverse planning, just real quick, like this. Um, and I save this script. I need to save it in order to run it. And then it flex demo one. And I think now it should run if I didn't, if I don't have any typos. Let's just click run. Let's see what happens. Okay, so yeah. Dose calculation is running now already for the first beam, and then the optimization will be started um, for the second beam. And and uh, after that, you will have your results. If you want, I mean, you can have this run overnight for 100 co configurations. But it's really nice that you have the opportunity to use the MATLAB scripting environment within this context right away to, to generate the workflow um, that, that you basically want. You have your results now in this REST container, result container, how I called it. Um, and this is a cell array in MATLAB again. And if, I, if you double click on that, then you see you have the physical dose now lying here. And if you want, you can of course directly use um, the MATLAB visualization to, to um, yeah, check your results. And I'm just going to do this real quick with you, that you see that something really happens. We're looking at the um, 45th slice now. 
And now you see like that that's my first beam orientation that was coming from 45 degrees. And if I now just change to the second result in my result container, then I get um, yeah the result for 135 degrees. Um, just just like that, and of course I can run DVHs on that and, and all kinds of stuff um, if I want if I want to. Um, what I wanted to convey is the basic idea, um, yeah, that you can use MATLAB now to to generate your workflow the way you want it using using the building blocks provided. Um, yeah, here you see. Um, one other thing that I mentioned, I mean, this is this is now now um, of course nice that you can use these building blocks, but again, because everything is MATLAB code, you can also um, go into the the functions itself. So this is the the calculation of the um, um, particle dose influence matrix. And you can directly interrupt any computation um, that that you want. So let's just make one last example before I go back to my conclusions. Um, so this is actually where the ray tracing takes place. And if I want, I can just um, put a breakpoint here and interrupt my computation at this point. So I'm just going to to start again my my dose calculation. Uh, particle dose that needs the input argument CT, steering information, the plan, and the CST. And then it will calculate the radiological depth cube. And now we're, we're, we're stopping here. And now I have basically access to, to the workspace of the function directly, which is nice. Because if I want, I can now just look at um, at the result of my radiological depth calculation. So I can say like my my red depth cube, I have to initialize something that has the same dimension like my CT. And then I have to write the values that I just got back at the at the right um, position. Like this. Just want to look real quick on my cheat sheet. Yeah, like that. And now I can look at the result of my radiological depth computation. Maybe again in, in this slice 45. And now you get um, yeah the radiological depths from this beam orientation from 135 for this prostate patients um, in millimeters displayed right away. That's all that I have with regard to, to the workflows. Now I just have two more slides, namely the outlook and my conclusions. So the outlook is, and I think that I, I mentioned maybe most of it already during the, during the presentation, um, with regard to data import and export, we are certainly going to um, work towards a SIR interface um, in our group, and we also want to get um, a DICOM plan import for photons going so that we're able to recompute photon treatment plans in MATRAT. Um, for dose calculation, we're working on the validation of photons, as mentioned, and the validation of RBE weighted carbonine dose calculations, and on the VMC++ um, interface. For the optimization, we are we're going to release the probabilistic and robust optimization um, methods at some point. And multi-leaf collimator sequencing is something that we also have to improve on, I think, um, the sooner the better. That's, that's stuff that uh, should certainly happen in the main release in, on GitHub um, in the near future, I think. DKFZ internally, we're, we're working on a unit testing environment. There's a student assistant setting that up for us to, so we can maintain the quality of the code a little bit better and, and work together um, by, by having consistency tests on our um, repository. And we also have 
two projects that started looking into 4D dose calculation and optimization using Matrat. Um, well, that's my that's my last slide. Um, it's pretty busy, but it again summarizes sort of the the features that are available. Um, and in conclusion, I just want to say that uh, yeah, Matrat enables those calculation and optimization for, for photons, protons, and carbon ions at a reasonable um, computation time while it combines a lot of benefits that you get from working with a numerical computation environment like, like MATLAB. And that's all I got for today. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions that might be.